ನಮಃ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದಾಂಗ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಶ್ನಾಯ ಬುಧನೇ ಶಿವನು ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿರಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನೀತಿ ನಮಿ ಮೇ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವಾತ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವ ನಿಗುಚಾರಿ ಮೇ ಮೇ ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ರೈತ ಗಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸರಿ ಗೌರಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಾಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಫೋರ್ಥ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಪುರಂಜನ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಟು ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಗ್ರಂಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಭು ಚಿತ್ರಜಾಯ ಶಿಲಿಮುಖಾಯಿತ್ರಭೂತ್ ಚಿತ್ರಭಾಜಾಯ ಶಿಲಿಮುಖಾಯ ವಿಪ್ಲವೋಭೂತ್ ದುಃಖಿ ಚಿತ್ರಭಾಜಾಯ ಶಿಲಿಮುಖಾಯ ವಿಪ್ಲವೋಭೂತ್ ದುಃಖಿ ಕರುಣಾತ್ಮನಾಭಿನ್ನ ಗಾತ್ರೂಸ್ ಬಾಡೀಸ್ ಚಿತ್ರಭಾಜಾಯ ವಿತ್ ವೆರಿಗೇಟೆಡ್ ಫೆದರ್ಸ್ ಶೀಲಿ ಮುಖಾಯ ಬಾಯ್ ದಿ ಎರೋಸ್ ವಿಪ್ಲವಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಭೂತ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡನ್ ದುಃಖಿತಾನ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಅಗ್ರೀವ್ ಸಹ ಅನ್ಬೇರಬಲ್ karuna atmanam for persons who are very merciful okay. let's see <coughs> translation When King Puranjana was hunting in this way many animals within the forest lost their lives with great pain being pierced by the sharp arrowheads upon seeing these devastating ghastly activities performed by the king all the people who were merciful by nature became very unhappy such merciful persons could not tolerate seeing all this killing На цар поранена много горски животни в страшни мъки се противиха животите. Понизани от острите царски стрели, 
когато видяха унищожителните противни деяния на Коранжина, всички състрадателни са за те хора се почувстваха много нещастни. Те не бяха състояни да гледат тези зверски убийства. The Lord, when demoniac persons engage in animal killing, the demigods or devotees of the Lord are very much afflicted by this killing. Demoniac civilizations in this modern age maintain various types of slaughterhouses all over the world. Rascal swamis and yogis encourage foolish persons to go on eating flesh and killing animals and at the same time continue their so-called meditation and mystical practices. All these affairs are ghastly and a compassionate person, namely a devotee of the Lord, becomes very unhappy to see such a sight. The hunting process is also carried on in a different way, as we have already explained. Hunting women, drinking different types of liquor, becoming intoxicated, killing animals and enjoying sex all serve as the basis of modern civilization. The Vaishnavas are unhappy to see such a situation in the world and therefore they are very busy spreading this Krishna consciousness movement. The devotees are pained to see the hunting and killing of animals in the forest, the whole says sale of slaughter of animals in the slaughterhouse and the exploitation of young girls in brothels that function under different names as clubs and societies. Hmm. The devotees are pained, being very much compassionate upon the killing of animals in sacrifice. The great sage Narada began his instructions to King Prachina Barhishat. In these instructions, Narada Muni explained that devotees like him are very much afflicted by all the killing that goes on in human society. Not only are saintly persons afflicted by this killing, but even God himself is afflicted and therefore comes down in the incarnation of Lord Buddha. Mm-hmm. 
Jaya Deva Goswami therefore sings Saraya Ridaya Darshita Pashugatam simply to stop the killing of animals, Lord Buddha compassionately appeared. Some rascals put forward the theory that an animal has no soul or is something like a dead stone. In this way, they rationalize that there is no sin in animal killing. Actually, animals are not dead, stone, but the killers of animals are stone hearted. Consequently, no reason or philosophy appeals to them. They continue keeping slaughterhouses and killing animals in the forest. The conclusion is that one who does not care for the instructions of saintly persons like Narada and his disciplic succession surely falls into the category of Nashta Pragya and thus goes to hell. So, translation again. When Kung Puranjana was hunting in this way, many animals within the forest lost their lives with great pain being pierced by the sharp arrowheads. Upon seeing these devastating, ghastly activities performed by the king, all the people who were merciful by nature became very unhappy. Such merciful persons could not tolerate seeing all this killing. <laughs> So, yes, uh, ghastly activities, that is what is described in this verse. Let's see what the Sanskrit is. Yeah. Um, dusaha, unbearable. Actually, for one who has a little bit of sentiment, compassion means to be able to suffer with others when they see suffering, they cannot bear it. And Srila Prabhupada gives a story. He said he was personal witness in Calcutta. He says that a, he calls him a hotel man, somebody who has a hotel or, you know, he's cooking for other people. 
Има там един хотелиер и човек, който гони за, за другите хора. So there was the, the man and his child, his son, small boy, and the man took a chicken and cut off his head with a knife. И това, което стана този хотелиер, взел едно, едно пиле, една кокошка и отрязал главата с един нож. And Well, the chicken was still flapping like this, you know, without the head. And the man was laughing, you know, because it looks funny. Somebody's flapping, no head. And the small boy was crying. So, same situation, two different reactions, depending on how is your heart. Like here it was said, stone hearted. Yes. So therefore the devotees are supposed to be compassionate. They can suffer when they see others suffer. Paradukaduki. But nowadays um, very rare that actually somebody is really merciful or compassionate. And as it is what it was explained, basically it's due to the ignorance that people think that animals don't have a soul. But even if one, like the small boy, probably was not conscious that the chicken had a soul. <laughs> Despite, even if you don't know there is no soul, there is a soul. But still, um, one sees somebody, some other living entity um, being in pain, one should feel that this is not right and not cause that situation. But today, in today's society, and since a long time, practically this is this sentiment is practically <coughs> just disappearing. Um, I mean, Robert talks about slaughterhouses, right? I mean, here we have King Puranjana, he goes to the forest hunting. That's not good. <laughs> And he is killing the animals with arrows. And it is said here that they lost their lives with great pain. Um, we have a similar situation with Migari, the hunter. When Narada Muni met him, he on his way saw animals half killed. So they were also in great pain, obviously, if you're shot and that you're not dead, then there's a lot of pain until you die. Uh, 
А, така били наранени, че били на половина мъртви и което означава, че с много голяма болка, докато умреш. And so when Narana Muni pointed out that this is not good, at least you should kill them completely, uh, the hunter was responding, well, that's what I learned, I, I don't, what's the problem? И Нарана Муни му казал, че поне ги обина на тяло, защото да не продължава да страдат. И обето отвърно, но това, което аз знам, така така ме научих. Той къде е проблема? So here, um, and then he of course explained to him that well, later on you're going to have big problems because all these animals will come and kill you. И той му обяснил, че по-късно нататък ще имаш голям проблем с всички тези животни. Те ще трябва те да те убиват. И Нарадамуни ще прави това само тук с Кринг Пачина Барешат. Той ще прави това. Това е една пейнтинга в Багаватам, където Кринг е атакуван от всички тези анимали, които е убил преди, като хънта. И тук Нарадамуни ще прави същото нещо с тази Пачина Барешат. Всъщност има такава картина в Багаватам, където се показва как всички животни са, които стали за убит, го атакуват. So, but um, as we said nowadays, this is just a few animals. How my, how, a hunter, how many can they kill in, a, in one day? Тук говорим за uh, няколко животни. Колко животни един ловец може да убие за един ден? Even expert hunter, you have to first find the animal. And normally they run away, so it's not so easy. Yeah, yeah. But when it's organized slaughter, like today in practically all countries of the world, I don't think there's any country, maybe the Vatican, that doesn't have a slaughterhouse. It's called a country. Anyway, normally all countries have definitely have some slaughterhouse. No, dnešno vreme ima organizirani kladnici. Mislim, če v vsičkih njama strana v tega svet, kaj je tudi njama organizirani kladnici. Može bi v Vatikana, ali... Well, it's Vatican state. It's not really a country, but officially it's like... No, to ni točno strana, a to je... It's, it's not Italy, it's better. <laughs> anyway, but, um, so every day in the world, what do you think, how many animals, just on the land, not, not in the water, are being killed? for slaughter, uh, I mean for, for, for uh, food. Every single day, not, not the whole year. <laughs> Estimate, 200 million. 200 million. That makes in a year seventy two thousand million. Yes. It's, it's seventy two billion, but that doesn't sound much. It's seventy two thousand million. <laughs> That's a lot of living entities. Therefore, then now when there's a war, we are all surprised. I mean, wars are going on practically all the time. Now when there's a big one, we are surprised. The other ones are just going on and just a part of life. По принцип има разни войни, но не много големи и хората не обръщат много внимание. Когато има голяма война, хората са много учудени. Но ви казахме, че има и много фиш, но не е това, че фиш са... Не е важно, че са много изгубени в Тамагуна. И също разбира се и много риби също се избиват. Не си кажа, че... Това ще се избиват ревите и няма никакво значение, защото те са 
Um, it's more fish than the animals on the land, huh? Just uh, to give you some idea. <laughs> so, and now, again, now you can estimate how many, how many fish are being killed every single day. Two thousand one hundred million. That's two point one billion milliard. A day, a day, every day, not not in a year. I'm saying many more than the animals. Two hundred thousand? No, two point one billion. Two thousand one hundred million. That's a they say it's a low estimate, probably more. Uh, <laughs> you know, you add, you know, so many millions of animals and so many fish every single day, every year, for so many years. It's staggering. It's unbelievable. Yeah, they say well, if you make it in a year, it's about <coughs> 2.7 trillion. <laughs> anyway, this just gives you know we we're not aware. Nobody's really conscious of this. But uh, and and Sheila Prabhupada, of course, not in this purpose, but in other purpose, and that's a long time ago, he said that when this is being done, then there will be so many reactions for human society. <laughs> war is one, a pandemic is another one. Yeah, and all these disasters, uh, they are more and more coming. So we try to counteract with our science, but we are not thinking that actually these are all reactions to simple activities. I mean, the material world, as Krishna points out in Bhagavad Gita, by nature is a place of suffering. Even if you're <coughs> completely pious, you don't kill anybody, you don't do anything really bad, still, birth, death, old age and disease will be there. So that's inevitable. But on top of this, if you becoming sinful, then suffering will increase. So, uh, and generally one should have this feeling if one sees others suffer, one does not want uh, that to happen because one applies it as another injunction. Whatever you don't want that is being done to you, don't do that to others. But, because of ignorance, people think there's a big difference between a human being and an animal or a fish or insect or any other living entity. Generally, they are seeing like um, things, not as actually living beings. Although, when it comes to dogs, we become very much inclined. 
There's even laws in society. If somebody beats a dog and somebody else denounces him to the police, he'll get in, he'll go to court, he'll be at least fine. Maybe he goes to jail, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you just kill a dog for just because, yes, I, I, I like to kill a dog, you become a criminal. If you kill a cow, you get paid. Right? Yes. So this is a demoniac society, and don't be surprised if collectively we have to suffer. So therefore, Krishna Bhagavad Gita, he points out that the Dharma of the Vaisha is first thing is go raksha to protect the cows. But you know, today's society is just the other way around. You kill the cow, you protect the cow, the dog. So we have to be yeah, conscious of, of this and um, at least to try to convince people that this is complete ignorance. Um, otherwise, as the Robert points out here at the end, one falls into the category of Nashta Pragya and thus goes to hell. <laughs> but here he doesn't explain what that means. Nashta means to destroy and Pragya means intelligence. That somebody whose intelligence is destroyed. He doesn't have intelligence. Prahlad Maharaj says, Kaumaram Achare Pragya, Dharmam Bhagavatam Iha. Somebody who's intelligent, they will understand that from childhood on they should dedicate themselves to Bhagavad Dharma. And Nashta many times comes, we know, means to destroy. So one has to become Pragya, not Nashta Pragya. <laughs> and Nashta Pragya to go to hell, hell, yes. And then you have to be born again in a terrible condition, uh, have to suffer. So this is all uh, very. Uh, deplorable situation of human society. And <coughs> unfortunately, in most cases, as also is pointed out here, somebody who ha is habituated to participate in this animal killing, they have no capacity to understand philosophy. Uh, that's pointed out in the beginning of the 10th canto <coughs> that um, those who are pasugna, who are killers of animals, they will feel no, no attraction for Krishna consciousness. 
тези, които са ваши огня, тези, които убиват животните, нямат състрадание към животните, те нямат шанс да развиват Кришна съзнание. Will appeal to them. They don't know what you're talking about. They don't. There's no, no capacity to understand. So. What to do? <laughs> Normally, prasadam is the only way for such people. <laughs> That's the experience, you know, you speak philosophy. Yeah. And if they're lucky, if you cook something in ghee, then they will maybe change the taste uh, from animal food to sattvic food. Uh, Prabhupada mentioned that, you know, that um, if you make pakoras in a certain way, they will have a similar taste to what they are accustomed to with some meat preparations. But it's better and it's non-violent, so that may change gradually. Yeah, you get something from the cow which is not bloody. So then, possibly, there will be some change of heart sooner or later. Otherwise, um, stone hearted, then when things animals are dead stone, and you just can kill them, there's no problem. <coughs> All right, any questions or comments? Hmm? Yeah. It's a dangerous time, huh? Yeah. Uh, he wants to ask that uh, because from the child, childhood, uh, when the people are young, they have been teach from their parents that um, to be strong and healthy and nourished, <laughs> you have to eat meat, and therefore they. Yeah, that's, 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 it's ignorance. That's that's definitely a fact. Of course, not in your only your neighborhood, in all neighborhoods on the of the world. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that avidya is ignorance. You know, all suffering comes from ignorance. <laughs> Now they are, you know, in, because also of preaching by devotees, people become a little more conscious that this is actually a false, um, how you say, um, statement. Yeah. It's sim- they, the doctors, some, certain doctors still say this, but it's just false. Um, and then 
they recently, well, in the last so many years, they made different studies just to see scientifically whether that's true or not. Uh, even not so long ago, um, like you, you know, uh, twins from one egg, which are like really completely like almost the same. And both are, they have some gym, right? Or they, they have a gym. <laughs> Um, so they, for I don't know how many months, one continued with meat and everything as usual, and the other one became a vegan. And then they, of course, they had some uh, you know, analysis, how is the, the blood test and this and that, and whether they're still, the other one is just you know, <laughs> meat or not, as they think, if you don't eat meat, then you don't have any more strength. So then surprised that yes, the vegan had less cholesterol, first thing, everybody liked that. <laughs> that was positive. And he was not less strong. Uh, that you know, it was proven. And in nature, you can see an elephant is a vegan, eh? and a gorilla, I think, also. And they are very strong animals. So, and, you know, it has nothing to do. This is just a myth. <laughs> what about the bulls? They only eat grass, right? Basically, uh, yes. maybe some grain they can. Uh, but, but even if they don't have, if they just have grass, I mean, you try to fight with a bull, huh? They, they have to have a sword and help. Otherwise, the bull will finish you. Right. Even if they are small, how can you control a small one? Uh, uh, can you try? Can, can try, eh? <laughs> <laughs> they, they only drink milk, practically. <laughs> They're stronger than maybe a small tiger, even. I mean, you know, a small tiger. You can probably manage, but a small bull? It's difficult, huh? <laughs> Anyway, so this is a myth. This idea that doctors say, yes, you have to eat meat in order to be healthy. It's just actually the opposite. <laughs> but, you know, there may be so many reasons. Either they're completely ignorant or they're paid by the meat industry, which is also happens. They make a study, but they're paid. And they will claim this and this and it's all so-called scientific. Anyway, and of course we have devotees who have been not eating meat for half a century. And they're not they're healthier than people. Anyway, it's just bogus idea. It's, it's already proven. So, 
Това е доказано. Окей, са ли си Mamma mia! Oh, mamma! There's nothing beyond mamma. That's your dharma. Mamma, mamma, mamma. Uh, it depends on your capacity. If you are very expert, you may be able to survive in such an environment and still help and preach. And if not, then you're putting yourself in danger in such a way that then you get killed and then what's the benefit? Nobody benefits, neither you nor anybody else. No, I mean, it would fall in one sense in this idea of over-endeavoring, trying to do something which actually is beyond your capacity. Don't do that. It may be some good ideas, I mean, good intention, but if, no, you don't do this because, you know, the result will not be positive. <coughs> In maybe extreme situations, then uh, you better run. So, yeah? I mean, you know, if you try to fight with a whole gang of, I don't know, five strong men who are, have some weapon, even without weapon, and you are one guy, you may say, well, come on, you know, let's see, Krishna will protect me. And you get killed. You know, what's the point? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, if you're Prahlad Maharaj, you can do that. Right? There were the demons, I mean, we have, you know, that even with tridents, there were serpents, there were boiling oil, there were elephants. Nothing could kill him because Prahlad is Prahlad. But if you're not Prahlad, if you're in any of these situations, you get killed. And like I said, you know, you're, you have a bull. Okay, I'll, I'll fight the bull. Don't be stupid. You know? 
You know, the blue will just go one time like this, and, you know, it catches you right where your yugala vein is, and you're finished. Mm-hmm. What happens is that you're not the first one who that will happen to. Mm-hmm. You know, or this, you know, the fanatic who will walk on a busy highway saying, you know, Krishna will protect me. No, no car will, <laughs> no car will hit me. You know, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, and then the, boom, the truck comes and, you know, oh, what happened? Krishna didn't protect me. <laughs> right? I mean, and then somebody else will just see there's no God, you know. <laughs> you are not protected. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, I mean, no, because, in the, first of all, don't make God your auto supplier. That you behave in such a way that practically you force him to protect you because you are a fool. Yeah. And he probably, you know, he gives you intelligence not to do something, but then you ignore the uh, instruction and don't be surprised if you get a negative result. So anyway, everybody has to know their own limits. Mm-hmm. Yes. Otherwise you act in ways that is not very good. <laughs> All right, anything else? <laughs> yes, you have to continue construction. <laughs> 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 Okay, Srila Prabhupada Kizai, Srila Srimad Bhagavatam Kizai, Srimad Bhagavatam Kizai.